Welcome back to Round Time Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris. Next to me here is the motor from a 1964 Triumph TR4. Put a Newman cam in it, and I gotta get the cam timing right. So you can see that the chain is already on there. So obviously I've got it done. So let's see how I did it. Thanks for watching. Let's get it sorted. Looking at the back of the motor here, so this, what you could see right here, this round part, that's the back of the camshaft. And obviously, so you don't have an oil leak, the, um, there's a plug, core plug that goes there. It's a dish type plug as opposed to a, or excuse me, a dome type plug as opposed to a dish type plug. And as you can see, this arm holding up the uh, engine is in the way. So I'm gonna loosen that up and kind of roll that out of the way. I have a jack underneath. If uh, you can not see that in the picture, but there's a jack underneath, just barely supporting the weight, just in case it starts to give up a little bit. Pull the camshaft out, clean that up real well, and get the core plug in that. And because it's a dome type, you just can't slide it in with some sealant. You gotta put it in with some sealant and then kind of wrap on it a little bit with a, with a good size socket. And it'll tend to dish it out the opposite direction. When I get there, I'll show you a little bit better. Obviously with the interference from the engine stand, I kind of wish I'd done this when uh, I had the block before I put it up on the stand when it was completely empty, but slipped my mind, I forgot. So I am gonna use sealant, like I mentioned, I'm just gonna use the former gasket stuff. I did ask around and kind of take an informal poll. There is special stuff that they make for it, but it's, it's not cost effective. And, and most of the guys I talked to, including some guys that build the race motors, they use the, form, the uh, former gasket and they haven't any problems. But I do have some oil in there. I wanna get rid of that, get this all nice and cleaned up. And obviously I didn't wanna get the camshaft out of there so I don't get any of that gunk on the camshaft. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And uh, I'll come back when I'm ready to put this in and show you at least how I'm going to do it. And hopefully it'll work. So the way this works, you got this dome here and you can kind of see that hopefully that it's a concave convex dome, not a dish. And that's going to fit inside the recess in here. And there's a little lip that goes in. So it can only obviously go in so far. So I'm going to put seal on around the inside of that, come at it like this and get this thing in there and then drive it home. So it seats and then taking a socket and an extension so I can clear this engine plate. I'm gonna smack kind of in the middle, not completely in the middle, and uh, try to dish it out. And what that's gonna do is that's, as that pushes in on the center here, it's gonna splay the edges out a little bit and it's gonna kind of flare it and that's gonna help make the seal. So that's what we're going to try to do. I do have several of these. I think I ordered probably two or three of them just in case this doesn't go well. I'm leaving the camshaft in for now but if I can, uh, if I have to, I pop this thing out and try again, then I can do that. Got to be careful with this Permatex. As I've told you before, it kind of tends to get all over the place. Obviously, don't want this stuff on the bearing. So we're going to try to favor the outside here. Really wish that I had done this when I could get to everything better than I can now. That's for sure. I can't even turn the motor. All right, so that should be sufficient. Go ahead and get this thing ready to get placed in here. Try to get it seated. All right, so now that's in there, but if you just left it like that, uh, it would be possible to pop that thing out. So, double check here, make sure I'm... Definitely feels seated. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take this socket, just wrap it a couple times and try to essentially just cave it in that center there. And that's not working at all. I think maybe because the socket is hollow, it's not caving it in. Let me see if I can find a piece of rebar or something. Hold on. All right, got a piece of rebar here. We're gonna smack this guy. See if this works. All right, so that should have done it there. At least I hope. All right, so hopefully you can see it's kind of flattened in and it bulbed it, bubbled it a little bit for lack of a better way to put it. And hopefully that started to uh, Kind of flare it so fortunately you get one shot at this you're going to find out pretty quick whether or not you screwed it up when you start the motor up and it starts leaking all over the place it's the first time i've tried to do that but 
That's what I figured out. That's when the machine shop said how to do it. So there it is. So in preparation for putting the uh, front engine plate on and the, um, there's a gasket that goes there as well. You can kind of see where it's not painted. I've got a, a single stud here that I'm going to get ready to go on just like I did when I was doing my studs for the oil pump in the last video. So again, you don't need to get this stupid tight or anything. You're just trying to get this thing seated. So I will use the, the uh, two nut method to help me do that, but I'm not going for a particular torque or anything like that. Just going to get it so that that stud is seated. This one is, I think it's a five sixteenths diameter by one and five sixteenths length. So I've already got this all prettied up in black. All right, so that should be good. Get these two nuts off of here. Now, some of the bolts that are gonna hold the front engine plate on penetrate, the, the holes I should say, penetrate into the water jacket. All right, so these two up here do, uh, this one here, but that's for the water pump. And then a couple of the ones at the bottom are gonna penetrate into the oil. So for those, I'm gonna use thread sealant just a Permatex with the PTFE, just general purpose thread sealant. I'll uh, put the link in the description here. It's the same thing that I used on the Spitfire. I haven't noticed any leaks from any of the stuff I did there. So we're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and get it prepped for gasket. I'm gonna pull the camshaft out so I can spray kind of without worrying about it and getting that thing in my way, get this area cleaned up and we'll go ahead and get, uh, get this gasket on here. Got the engine plate on as you can see we've got five bolts that need to go in here six ish kind of all right and then these bottom ones like i had mentioned penetrate into the oil passage so i'm going to go ahead and put ptfe on those or thread sealant doesn't take a whole lot of this stuff like with most things you know you don't want to gunk it all up and make a mess out of it all right so you just kind of put this stuff on like i said not too much kind of oozing on me here. All right, so that looks good. We'll get these snug down. All right, got the front engine cover plate on. I'm gonna go ahead, get the camshaft lubricated with assembly lube, get that installed, get that front bearing for the camshaft in. And then I'm gonna go ahead also and put the timing cover, cover, yeah, the timing chain cover on so that I can just get full compression on this front engine plate without really worried about torques or anything like that. There is one more bolt that needs to go in here, stud. The, uh, the weird one here that gets the timing chain tensioner, I think is what it does. All right, got assembly loop on the rear bearing there, the camshaft, we'll go ahead and get that guy in. And then the front one. Sometimes you have to stick your finger in the, um, there it goes, fuel pump hole back there to get that all the way in. All right, so now the camshaft is in. And then you got the front bearing cap here and this only goes in one way. And you can see that bolts right there. And this is flattened out here. So obviously that's the way that it's gonna go in. I'm gonna lubricate the inside of this already with oil. So I'm not gonna worry about having to do that but I'm gonna spin it as it goes on to just try to spread spread out that, uh, what's it called? All right, so we'll go ahead and get these bolts in and I'm not concerned about these bolts either as far as torque goes. 
because these are not going to be final. This is, won't be final install for these. I need a lock washer anyway. These two bolts are just for the cam. Put those there just so I don't lose them. All right, let me get these guys snugged up. Spin the cam, make sure. And the cam doesn't turn. No, so I, you gotta do end float on the cam. I forgot about that. You tighten it down all the way and it won't spin, which I did. The more I thought about it, the silly it is to put the timing chain cover on because I can just use the bolts. So I'm not gonna do that. This only gets torqued to 13 foot pounds or so. So we're just gonna go ahead and go around all of those. Well, the tighten, even the ones that don't, that are gonna come back off. Because why not? And again, you've got these two down here go into that front ceiling block that I was telling you about when I put the oil pan on. And that's aluminum, but they're only 13 foot pounds here, so I'm not too concerned. Not stripping anything out. All right, should be all good. Now, the uh, you notice I don't have I edited all that stuff out. I don't have that front bearing anymore in there. If, you, if I push that camshaft in, it doesn't want to turn. And when I tighten that thing all the way down, it didn't want to turn. I don't remember. I'm going to look in the workshop manual real, real quick. I think there is an end float there that I just don't remember. So I want to look at that real quick. But it's, uh, it's turning now, but it made me a little nervous there because I couldn't turn the thing at all. So we're going to leave it like that, let it cure up. I'm not going to play with anything. Not going to do the cam timing now until that's all, all done with. We'll go ahead now and... Uh, Move on to something else. So I'd mentioned you have to do the end float here. This is the, the camshaft obviously standing up in the front bearing here. So there's a the gap between where that front bearing rests and the in this little ledge on the camshaft, there's an end float spec in that. So what it has you do is put the bearing in and then the gear, which is going to kind of clamp the bearing and suck the gear up into the or suck the, the front bearing up into the gear a little bit and then a gap should develop. So hopefully I'll try this without knocking the camshaft over. That'd be bad. It doesn't really matter which way this camshaft gear goes to do this right now because no timing is done. Go ahead and tighten it up. So we're going to lift this now that that's tight and lift that gear all the way up. And that's going to tell me what my float is. So it says assemble the camshaft front bearing to the camshaft and temporarily attach the sprocket, which I did, and then measure the end float of the front bearing on the camshaft journal as shown in the figure. End float should be between 003 and 0075. So I've got a, um, I don't have the right feeler gauge set here, unfortunately. So I don't even start until 005. I'll stick that in there. I got all sorts of room for that one. So then we'll go to a 008. So this should not or just barely fit. All right, and I can't, can't get that in there. So that's good. We'll go down to 0 0.007. So this one can fit in there. And that does, all right? So I would say the 0 .007 fits, the 0 .008 does not. And with a spec, max spec of 0 .0075, I'd say we are good. So the problem that I had with not being able to turn the camshaft is gonna be taken care of when I get this thing all installed and bolted in and tightened down to that sprocket. It should move the camshaft up or out of the motor a little bit and not jammed into that back of it and should allow me to install properly. So we're going to go ahead and take this camshaft sprocket back off, lubricate the bearings that I've done it. I'll do it again. Lubricate them up real quick, get it installed into the motor, and then move on with camshaft timing. All right, so I got the camshaft in there. I'll put the front bearing cap on. 
put these screws in, this cam should turn. Might be close. Yep, so the cam's turning. The problem is, is I can't, we're gonna see here what happens. So I'm gonna screw this down because obviously if I put the camshaft sprocket on, you can't tighten these bolts without that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Camshaft bearing to block front, 16 to 18 foot pounds. All right, so 17 foot pounds, I'll get a torque wrench real quick. Again, new lock washers on that guy. All right, so now, just as a proof of concept here, I'm gonna put this bearing cap on. And when I tighten it, I'll see, or excuse me, the sprocket on. When I tighten it, we're gonna see if I can turn the camshaft. If I can't, I'm gonna be a little nervous. So the torque spec on this is probably about the same. Now, this one's a little bit more, it's about 25 foot pounds. So we'll crank this up to 25. No, well, that's already turning. All right, well, that makes me feel better. At least now I know that I can turn the camshaft with this even snugged up just a little bit. Sorry, so that's good. So that's all I really wanted to do. Now I need to find top dead center of the motor, which I'll do here in a second. And uh, with the degree wheel and all that good stuff, and then we'll be that much closer. A locking plate that goes in here, so once it gets tight, tight, you bend it over and everything like that. But I'm not gonna worry about that now because you might have to change the, the position of the gear and all that to get your cam timing Bang. just right. So. so now I've gotta get the gear for the valve or the timing chain onto the crankshaft. So there's spacers that are involved with that. The car came with three of them. So I'm gonna put those back on. I'm putting the same gear back on. Essentially the crankshaft's no different. I don't really expect any of this to change. And essentially what you're, we're going to do is we're trying to align the camshaft gear to the crankshaft gear for the valve train so that it's not cattywampus and it doesn't impose, you know, forces in the wrong way and everything like that. So while I would key this, and I'll show you that when I get to that point, now I've got the uh, camshaft, or excuse me, the crankshaft gear here, and I'm just going to kind of get that guy on there. And it goes on pretty tight, so I'm just going to use a piece of wood to, to help me bang it on. But um, I did lubricate it with a little bit of oil, but it's still pretty tight. All right, so that's driven home. So now all it really says is take the sprocket and you align it here to make sure you are essentially a relatively flat edge. All right, you go across the gear to the gear, taking it a couple different spots here just to try to get a nice average. And all I'm doing is kind of putting the straight edge up there and trying to rock it. And as long as I don't get any rocking, I think I'm fine. So that should be good with the three. And like I said, this is what came off. I didn't really change anything. Well, the camshaft changed, but I wouldn't expect that to, to really impact it too much. So now I'll pull that gear back off and now I got to put the um, Woodruff pins in there so that it you know, stays positioned. Next up, I need to find top dead center of the motor. I got a degree wheel here. I just, this is something I printed out online, plastered it to a uh, piece of cardboard, and that's gonna be able to provide me the degree wheel. Behind that, I have the crankshaft pulley, so nothing special there. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this and determine what top dead center is. I'm gonna use the piston stop method, and I'll show you why you need to do this and not why you just can't set and eyeball it and say, okay, that's good enough for top dead center. So let me show you here. So the piston here is gonna be on, it's coming up and you can just barely see, hopefully in the screen I've got that I'm gonna be turning the motor. And as I turn it and that piston comes up, you can see it gets to the point. And then right about there, it stops moving, but I'm still turning the crankshaft, and that's just the way that this thing is designed. When it comes up to top dead center, there's, there's almost a little dead spot as the crank pin, the connecting rod kind of rolls around to start onto the downward stroke. So as you come through that, what happens is, is you are gonna have a dead spot. You have to account for that dead spot where the crankshaft is still rotating, 
but the piston is stationary because the connecting rod is moving about the piston. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. Like I said, what I'm gonna do is what I think is the easiest is I'm gonna use a degree wheel and I'm gonna use a piston stop. All the piston stop is, is this guy right here and it's just a piece of bar stock with a bolt that I've threaded in and it's got a little lock nut here so I can turn this bolt in and down and lock it down with that thing with the, with the locking nut and as that goes on that bolt is going to hit the piston so what's going to happen is, is I'm only going to be able to rotate the crankshaft so far until that piston comes up and smacks into the bottom of that bolt. So we're going to go ahead and get this kind of set up here. I'll get this tightened down so it doesn't move. I'll come back around and show you how I can use this to determine what actual no kid and top dead center is. All right, so what I did is I put a little pointer in here so that I could mark on the degree wheel where I am. I got the bump or the piston stop in there. Right now it's hitting the piston stop and I'm looking at uh, 320 eight and a half. So 328 and a half, we'll write that down. Now we'll go the opposite direction, bring it to the bump stop in the opposite direction. All right, stops there and we're at 20, I'll write it 29. So I'll write that number down. All right, so now that I've got those two numbers, what I gotta do now is the math. Because this number resets at 360 degrees, right, I have to account for that. So I gotta take that 328 and a half, go up to the 360 mark, and then add the additional 29 degrees. So we have the difference between 360 and 328.5 is 31 and a half degrees. Add that extra 29 and a half, or just, excuse me, add that extra 29 degrees, and that gets me 60.5 degrees. So I know the distance between that 30 or 29 and that 328 and a half, whatever I said it was, is 60 and a half degrees. So that span in between these two dots, right, is 60 and a half degrees. So right in the middle of that is top dead center. So if I take that 60 and a half degrees and I get the middle of it, I divide by two, I get 30.25 degrees. So, what I can do is I can either subtract 30.25 from this number and end up over here, or I can add 30.25 to the high number and get somewhere over here, right? So it just makes more sense to me to add the 30.25 to the 328.5 because of the way that this thing is set up. And I'm at 358.75. So it just so happens, this is purely coincidental that I'm pretty close to actual top dead center on this dial indicator. Again, that number, the numbers that you're getting here are not important. The math is what's important. So I'm gonna take the piston stop out now, turn the motor until it gets to 358 and a half degrees, and then I'll be at top dead center. And then I can't touch the motor again. Now I'd have to align the camshaft. Next up, what we're gonna do here is set the actual cam timing with the chain. So this is a Newman cam, so it's aftermarket a little bit hotter of a cam. The instructions come with the camshaft and since the characteristics of the camshaft are known, essentially what it tells you to do is you set the, the uh, motor to top dead center, which I've already done, we went through that. And now the next part is to find out where the cam is for the number one intake lobe where it's the highest at its peak. So the way that the motor set up is the first, the first tap it here was gonna be your exhaust you can look at the head and you can look at the ports on the head to verify, but it's exhaust intake, intake exhaust, and so on. So the second lobe in is gonna be the number one cylinder's intake. And as I rotate the camshaft here by hand, not connected to anything, you're gonna see this number come up. So this is a little wooden dowel here. Looks like that guy got electrical tape on the end of it there to provide a little bit of more thickness so it sits in there and doesn't wobble around at all but not enough that it, that it restricts motion. Got a little bit of oil on there to help with that as well. And as I rotate this camshaft, you're gonna see this value come up as the simulated tap it there rises and I wanna find the peak. So we're gonna do this a couple times so that I can go back and forth and I can kind of verify the measurements, but we're gonna to get to the peak there and we're gonna stay there. So it's 269.5. And I'm still turning, so that looks like that's about all I'm going to get. 
All right, so that's, you can see that little dropout right there. It is, um, sometimes it does kind of get hung up a little bit. So that's one of the disadvantages of this. It's not, uh, it's not perfect. 269.5 was my max that time. Coming the other way here. All right, so that's 269.5. So now I know that I'm at the top of that number one intake cam lobe. So now I don't want the cam to move. And that's kind of the trick now is, you know, anything you can do could potentially move this cam. So I'm gonna leave the dial indicator up there so I can keep an eye on that, make sure that doesn't move. Now. I've got my degree wheel set up and you would see me go through and set that and I got the little pointer there. And you can just see that in the, uh, in the bottom here. I'll zoom in a little bit better for you. All right, so now this pointer really, right? I know I'm at top dead center. So the, the, where the pointer is is kind of arbitrary. So I'm gonna make it as convenient as possible and set it right at zero. Now what the cam instructions tell you to do is rotate the motor 112 degrees in the rotation that the motor's going. So the motor rotates clockwise here. So I'm gonna rotate the motor 112 degrees after top dead center. So I'm gonna rotate this all the way around on the blue until it gets all the way over here, which is off screen at the bottom, but I'm gonna get that all the way around to 112 degrees. And then I know that the timing should be aligned. Everything should be good. And now I gotta connect my chain. So I'm gonna uh, get a wrench here, rotate the motor. I'll be right back. All right, so now that motor is set. Looking at my uh, dial indicator, it still, still indicates a peak there. So now the trick is to get the chain on without moving anything at all. Can't move the motor. Now the motor's kind of difficult to turn, so I wouldn't expect that to be a problem, but the cam is not that difficult to turn. So again, I'm gonna keep an eye on that dial indicator to make sure. Now the reason I didn't put the locking plates on is because the bolts there's only one way that the camshaft is gonna bolt up with the chains connected between, or the chain connected between the two sprockets. So you can see there's four holes there, but the holes are just offset. So you can turn it, rotate it 90 degrees, and it'll do like a half a degree of rotation, or you can actually flip the cam sprocket over, it'll do a quarter degree. Anyway, those, those four holes are not perfectly symmetrical, and neither is the camshaft, and that's kind of how you fine tune your cam timing. Now, because everything is locked now, all I really care about is getting those holes aligned with the T so I can put everything together. I don't care which way I need to do that. I don't care about the number of degrees because I know exactly where the cam is. I know exactly where the crankshaft is. And all I got to do now is get the two to be able to communicate via that chain. So a little bit of trial and error here, but we'll give it a shot and see if I can't get this right. All right, well, that, uh, that seemed a little too easy, to tell you the truth. Let's see what happens here. We're gonna rotate the motor here, and the camshaft, you can just see it at the top of the screen. I don't know if you can read the numbers or not. It uh, shows you the degrees, or the inches that the cam lobe is putting out here. All right, so it's going down, all the way down. Motor rotates with the cam, that, that's a beautiful thing. Now, I could, I, I have, you know, I, I want to verify this in some way. I got to put a little brain power into it. But when I did the cam timing on the Spitfire rebuild, I used the workshop manual and it uses essentially the, the rock of the lobes and everything like that to make sure and it uses both the exhaust and the intake and all sorts of stuff. And I can use that procedure to verify, but I'm going to wait until I got the head on to do that. So that's not going to be able, that's not going to impact my ability to adjust the cam timing once I get the head on, if it is wrong, I can fine tune it. But, uh, but, I, but I think I'm at least pretty close. So I'm not gonna really worry about it too much besides when I get the cam on and I've got the, all the lifters in there and all that other stuff, I think it'll be a little bit more difficult to turn the cam by mistake. 
and it might provide me just a little bit more ease of, of doing that procedure. So I'm, uh, I'm happy where it is now. Again, I'm gonna verify it. So I'm gonna leave the tabs on bent, not gonna torque anything down yet. Write a little note to remind myself cam timing or put a sticky on there or something so that I know that I, uh, I have stuff to do, but we're gonna uh, continue to move on. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below, tell me what you think. Well, like I said, I think that went a little, seemed to go a little bit too easy, but I think I got it. And it's not something that I can't double check on the, uh, the backside when I get the head back on, so that shouldn't be too bad. So that's all I've got from Chile, Southeastern Connecticut. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.